there guys, Erica here from High 49 rc Hope you all are doing great. If you're looking for friends to hang out and chat with online and in the RC hobby, check out my Discord server. Link is in the description down below. So, today's going to be an interesting video. Slightly different-ish. Um, it's going to be a test of precision with the milling machine. It's a bit vague. Yeah, I know. So, I want to rebuild a 550 size motor. Problem is... My Darren's Quick Set Com lathe from Team Orion does not fit said armature, which is an issue. What I want to do, which I have been wanting to do for a while now, is make this lathe capable of handling 550 sized armatures. So to get my 550 armature to fit in the lathe here, what's going to have to happen is I'm going to have to move this carbide support over about half an inch. Now, it shouldn't be too difficult to do. It's got a mounting hole there on the bottom and two locating pins. So those won't be too difficult to transfer over. However, there's also two bolts right down here that attach the carbide block to the ways. The ways, for those that aren't familiar, are what the like tool slides on, basically. So once this gets moved over, I'm going to need to make a spacer block that goes between the carbide and the ways. And that, in theory, should be what keeps the two carbide blocks nice and parallel to each other. So speaking of parallelism, I want to go check this in the milling machine, grab my dial indicator, and I want to see how parallel the two inserts are right now and get a baseline for where they're at along with where the gaps for the motor shaft are and like how in line with each other they are. So then when I'm done, I can come back, look at my baseline numbers and see how well I did and tweak it if it needs to be tweaked at all. This is not good. I mean, it's great, but uh, it's not good for me. This carbide block is absolutely dead perfectly square with the table, which is fantastic, but also that is a super high bar for me to meet. Now, this one is five thousandths out of square with it. Grab two blocks just for demonstration purposes. And I don't remember if it's this way or this way, but I'll check uh, after I finish recording this. And then for the front face, for how in line they are with each other, they are perfectly aligned, plus or minus half a thousandth. Okay, so then the motor shaft gap, the back edge of this one is four thousandths farther back than this one. And then the front edge of this one is this way of this one plus uh, two and a half thousandths, plus or minus one thou. Hopefully you guys understood that. Hopefully the blocks helped because, you know, that looks perfect and this is very obviously not, so that should help. But um, I am going to check that one measurement that I was talking about. And then I want to take this apart and just indicate on the face of the waves. back on the way block here is dead perfect. No surprise there because the inside of the carbide block was dead perfect also. So before I took my carbide block off, what I did was I measured vertically to see what the 
discrepancy was there and it was one thousandth out this way and coincidentally top to bottom on the way block here was half a thousandth i think it was plus or minus half a thousandth top to bottom so that makes perfect sense it was also tipped in this way so all my numbers right now are making sense i've got a good baseline i need to think about what to do next <laughs> okay so i think i have a grasp of what's going on here so my alignment dowels are 0.115 of an inch in diameter and the hole that they are press fit into fits a number 32 wire gauge drill perfectly and a 32 happens to be 1.14 inches in diameter. So that's a thousandth smaller than the alignment pin, thus making it a press fit. The center hole, the big hole in the middle here, uh, is a number 10. So that is not very crucial because that's just a, a screw hole, but that fits a number 10. Um, so that's what I will use for that. And then I'll have to countersink it, of course, on the bottom, but that's really no big deal. So basically I need to find some dowel pin material. I was really hoping that they were gonna be an eighth of an inch in diameter because that would be perfect. I could just use an old motor shaft and cut that. But I can't, which is quite annoying. Just for fun, does that fit in there? No, it doesn't, that's a bummer. Okay, so basically I need to go run around the house, try and find something that's 115 thousandths in diameter. Okay guys, so this is what I found. Lots of hunting later. I came across a Traxxas shock shaft that is 116 thousandths and a Axial Yeti uh, control arm hinge pin, which is 114 thousandths. But I think I'm gonna go with the dowel pin because it fits in my carbide block really like pretty much perfectly. And it's got about as much slop as the dowel pins that are already on the lathe. Now, having a little bit extra slop in here is gonna probably be to my advantage because the holes aren't going to be 100% perfect. I mean, I'm gonna try, but you know how things go, they're not always perfect. So having that little bit of extra lee leeway is probably gonna be helpful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use a number 33 drill instead of the 32 like we were talking about earlier. The 32 is what was originally used to drill into the base plate. But I'm gonna use a 33, which is, let's see, that is 111 thousandths. So that is 3 thousandths smaller diameter than my hinge pin. And that's fine, because what I think I'm gonna do is put a taper on the end and then press in the pin into that hole. So it's gonna be a really, really tight fit. Good luck getting those out, but at least it'll stay in there. I'm gonna be starting out with a center drill just to give myself the best possible chance of getting just the absolute perfect hole, making sure everything is nice and straight and true and doesn't wander at all. got some holes in the base plate for a comm lathe. Yeah, those look great. Countersunk the main one there. Looks absolutely fantastic. And we've got the press in the background because I have also made my dowel pins. I've tapered one end so that they should go in a little bit easier. Yep, there it goes. It's going in all right. 
actual stick now. Overkill and unnecessary? Yes. Fun? Also yes. <laughs> Oops. Aw, oh, shit. I just dropped that pin. I have no clue where that just went. That's not good. There we go. That looks like, right, the same height as the other one. Gorgeous. Now I need to see if I can find the other pin that just fell down there somewhere. Oh, brother. It wasn't worth fighting spiders for. I just went and made a new one. It took about 20 seconds. There you go, there is our second set of dowel pins. The back one is a little low, I think, but it's okay, they're just for alignment. And the first one actually poked to the bottom, so I'm gonna have to sand that down real quick, but that's no big deal. Woo, awesome. <laughs> okay, here we go, fitment test time. See if it goes on. Ooh, that is actually a fairly snug fit. Remember what I said about having a little bit of wiggle room? Absolutely. Perfect. Oh, that is great. That is such a nice snug fit. My bolt hole lines up absolutely perfectly. I, mean, I got rid of my Allen wrench, but all right. There it is. Look at that, guys. That is awesome. It's a little bit tight, but that is okay. I'm perfectly okay with that. Let's see. Where's that armature? What did I just do with it? Oh, here it is. And the armature sits in it nicely, spins really nice, so that is perfect. That's exactly what we want. No binding at all, which is fantastic. So now all I have to do is make a block to take up this gap here. Shouldn't be too bad. Just gonna be a block of aluminum with a couple holes in it. a charm for me today, I guess, guys. Finished my little block. I messed up the first time, of course, as usual, but I am very, very pleased with it. Come on, autofocus. Thank you. Very pleased. Nice and square, rectangular-ish. Got the hole for the original pin there on the bottom, and it fits absolutely gorgeously. It just sits right down where it needs to, and it's pretty much a perfect fit for the carbide block here and to top it all off the screws do thread in nicely I had to rob a couple off the milling machine actually because I don't have any long countersunk m5 screws so I'll have to go out and get some tomorrow but everything bolts up quite nicely and when I hold it up to the light I do not see any gaps which is awesome so i'm gonna go put this in the mill indicate it and i'll come back and let you guys know how we did all right folks the measurements are in and i gotta say i'm pretty surprised they are actually better than when we started starting with this block it is perfectly in line plus or minus half a thousandth the front edge of the motor shaft groove is Perfect, plus or minus half a thousandth. Um, the back edge of the motor shaft groove is a head on this one is a head of the other by two thousandths, plus or minus half a thousandth. And then the front faces of the two blocks, this one is a head plus or uh, one thousandth, plus or minus a thousandth. And then the vertical 
on this face here, so up and down, is perfect plus or minus half a thousandth. Here are all the numbers. You can pause the video and take a look. All the highlighted ones are the after, and all the non-highlighted ones right above it are the before. I know that is incredibly hard to follow with me saying this and that and all these numbers, but for those that care, here they are. I'd say they're pretty impressive. And they actually make sense because before we were, let's see, A was four thousandths ahead of B, and B was two and a half thousandths. So uh, four thousandths minus two and a half is one and a half, and we've got two plus or minus a half. Like all these numbers actually line up, they make sense, and I think that's really cool. It's not just a fluke, like it is actually seriously better. So with those awesome results, guys, I am gonna work on getting the lathe all put back together. And then I'm gonna clean up the shop and take this inside and do a couple passes on this armature here, uh, just to give it a test. Cause I mean, come on, we've come this far. We can't not give it a test run. So I'll clean up and we'll go inside and test it out. I would say that that works just wonderfully. That is so cool. It works, guys. That is just, that is, that is incredible. I'm so pleased. And there you have it, guys. Com lathe mod for 550 size armatures is complete. I'm very happy with it. Turned out nice. Gives me a lot more use out of my com lathe, which is great. And I can now turn that special motor that I was talking about earlier, which I'm not gonna tell you what it is yet, but if you guys can guess, Post up in the comment section down below what you think it is. It's a 550 armature and it's a vintage motor. I don't know. See what you guys think. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this little modification video. If you did, please do leave a big fat thumbs up if this does happen to be the first video that you have seen by me. Make sure you go down, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment down below as well. Follow me on Instagram at howie 49 underscore RC. And if you want to support the channel, join my Patreon. Yeah, there we go. That's it. Thank you guys so much again for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.